and today we got us a unique cannibalism creature known as the Wendigo. I'm gonna give you, there's a good bit about it, there's like different, you can go to different sites and learn about different theories and different descriptions and origins of the Wendigo. And now apparently though in Algonquin folklore, the Wendigo is a, it's a mythical man-eating monster or evil spirit native to the northern forests of the Atlantic coast and Great Lake regions of the United States and Canada. The Wendigo may appear as a monster with some characteristics of a human or as a spirit who has possessed a human being and made them become monstrous. It is historically associated with murder, insatiable greed, and the cultural taboos against such behaviors. Now there is different forms of the, Wendigo, of the Wendigo's name. You have the Wendigo, then you have the, it's another pronunci it's another spelling, but it's still Wendigo, the Wendigo, the Wittico, and the Wee, the Weetigo. And there's, it just goes on, it's like the, the Whitico, or the Wandigo. And then there's several other variants of the name, but it is a cannibalistic spirit resembling a zombie. Now, in some forms, the winding the Wendigo, I keep getting caught up in them other names. The Wendigo is the size of a human, while in others, it can be 15 feet tall. Now, the earliest description of the Wendigo was that of an, a similar appearance to a corpse with a skeleton-like thin body, with gray skin, sunken eyes, bloody lips, yellow fangs, and a long, slimy-like tongue. Now, later myths say that the Wendigo is a lipless ape with giant fangs that devours human flesh. It can turn a person into a Wendigo, which was one of the worst curses to the Algonquin-speaking Native Americans of the Canadan region. But now, how could a person grow to become one of these strange creatures? Well, according to lore, the Wendigo is created whenever a human resorts to cannibalism to survive. In years past, such a practice was possible, although still rare as many of the tribes and settlers in the region were cut off by the bitter snows and ice of the north woods. Now unfortunately though, eating another person to survive was sometimes resorted to and thus, the legend of the Wendigo was created. But now how real are these creatures? Because there's various, you know, tales and things like that about it. Could the legend of the Wendigo have been created merely as a warning against cannibalism? That's always a possibility. Or could sightings of, you know, a Bigfoot-type creature have created these stories? Well, this is unknown. It is believed that the white settlers to the region took these stories seriously. Now, at times, they even took the sightings and reports quite seriously and made enough of the local culture that stories like those of the Algernon Blackwood were penned. Now, real-life stories were told as well, and according to the settlers' version of the legend, the Wendigo would often be seen like Banshee-like to signal a death in the community. A Wendigo allegedly made a number of appearances near a town called, if I'm saying this right, <laughs> Rosasus in the northern Minnesota from the late 18th to the 1920s. Now each time that it was reported, now an unexpected death followed and finally it was seen no more. So I mean, the theories just run rampant about the Wendigo. Even in the last century, Native Americans actively believed in and searched for the Wendigo. One of the most famous Wendigo hunters was a Cree Indian named Jack Fiddler. He claimed to kill at least 14 of these creatures in his lifetime, although the last murder resulted in his imprisonment at the age of 87. So you have to think, you have an 87-year-old Cree Indian named Jack Fiddler running through the woods hunting down a Wendigo. But in October 1907, Fiddler and his son Joseph were tried for the murder of a Cree Indian woman. Now they both pleaded guilty to the crime, but defended themselves by stating that the woman had been possessed by the spirit of the Wendigo, and was on the verge of transforming into one entirely. So they had to, they'd done what they thought was best and put a stop to it. But according to their fi the defense, she had to be killed before she murdered other members of the tribe. But now also, there's other forms to what the Wendigo looked like. You have the description that I gave you that it was like, you know, a tall, thin, like, gray, like, you know, skeleton-looking zombie creature. There's tales of it that it's like, uh, its body is kind of shaped like a deer, sort of, but then its head has, like, you know, the gigantic deer head and the antlers and all that, but then there's some that say it has, like, a human body, like the one I described, with, like, you know, the deer antlers and all that on its head. There's many appearances. This creature even appears in the Fallout 76 game that's based in West Virginia of the Wendigo. 
But the thing what I don't understand about that right there is the Wendigo really wasn't in the West Virginia area, but they say it, it was. I'm originally from there, and I could tell you if I ever seen something even resembling what the descriptions I gave you, I'd probably be making this video because I would probably die of a heart attack from seeing something like this. But to me, the Wendigo is pretty cool, I guess, because if it is, if it was something to divert people from cannibalism back in these days, like when you got snowed in and you had nothing else to do, I guess it's meant to scare people, mainly because there's so many, like, different sightings and variations of the Wendigo that it, it would be interesting if this actually was real. It'd, it'd actually be terrifying, not interesting. <laughs> But everybody, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, like the video, subscribe. Leave me a comment on what you think about the Wendigo. Oh, also, the Wendigo also appeared in a, a video game called Until Dawn for the PS4. Now, that when that, that Wendigo and the Fallout 76 Wendigo, they kind of go with the the first description I gave you about the, you know, the humanoid-looking body. Pretty scary stuff. But you know, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.